Aircrafts today burn up a lot of fossil fuels. And switching to alternatives hasn't always been feasible. The world is definitely eager to move on to better options. And some time ago, we talked about China's solution to that on our channel. It was the electric plasma jet engine. But are they actually possible? Welcome back to Tech Monster. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. Before we dive into whether it's possible, let's establish what a plasma engine is. A plasma propulsion engine is a type of electric propulsion that generates thrust from a quasi-neutral plasma. This is different from other ion thruster engines, which generate thrust through extracting an ion current from the plasma source, which is then accelerated to high velocities using grids or anodes. There are four types of plasma engines, helicon plasma thrusters, magnetoplasma dynamic thrusters, pulsed inductive thrusters, and electrodeless plasma thrusters. And they have a world of advantages. Plasma engines have a much higher specific impulse value than most other type of rocket technology. The Vesemer thruster can be throttled for an impulse greater than 12,000, and Hall thrusters have attained about 2,000 seconds. This is a significant improvement over the bipropellant fuels of conventional chemical rockets, with specific impulses in the range of 450 seconds. With high impulse, plasma thrusters are capable of reaching relatively high speeds over extended periods of acceleration. Certain plasma thrusters, such as the Mini Helicon, are hailed for their simplicity and efficiency. Their theory of operation is quite simple and uses a variety of gases or combinations of gases as a propellant. These qualities suggest that plasma thrusters will be valuable to many mission profiles. Forget fuel-powered jet engines. We're on the verge of having aircraft that can fly from the ground up to the edge of space using air and electricity alone. Traditional jet engines create thrust by mixing compressed air with fuel and igniting it. The burning mixture expands rapidly and is blasted out the back of the engine, pushing it forwards. Instead of fuel, Plasma jet engines use electricity to generate electromagnetic fields. These compress and excite gases like argon into a plasma, a hot, dense ionized state, similar to that inside a fusion reactor or star. Plasma engines have been stuck in the lab for the past decade or so, and research on them has been limited to the idea of propelling satellites once in space. Berkent Guxel from the Technical University of Berlin and his team now want to fit plasma engines into planes. We want to develop a system that can operate above an altitude of 30 kilometers where standard jet engines cannot go, he says. These could even take passengers to the edge of the atmosphere and beyond. So, is it possible? Yes, the plasma engine is real. While most plasma engines are still confined to the laboratory, some have seen active flight time and use on missions. As of 2011, NASA has partnered up with the aerospace company Busick and launched the first Hall Effect thruster aboard the TACSAT-2 satellite. The thruster was the satellite's main propulsion system. Since then, the company has launched a second Hall Effect thruster in 2011. More plasma thrusters are likely to see flight time as the technologies mature. In 2020, research on what a plasma jet could look like was published by Wuhan University. The thruster works by creating a high current electric arc between the two electrodes. The cathode heats up, emitting electrons that collide with the propellant gas to produce plasma. The current running through the cathode back to the power supply induces a magnetic field. A Chinese team has demonstrated a prototype of a microwave plasma thruster capable of working in the Earth's atmosphere and producing thrust with an efficiency comparable to the jet engines you'd find on modern airliners, but under laboratory conditions. Plasma thrusters are already operational on spacecraft as a means of solar electric locomotion using xenon plasma. But such things are of no use in the Earth's atmosphere, since accelerated xenon ions lose most of their thrust force to friction against the air. Not to mention, they only make a small amount of thrust in the first place. The device works by ionizing air to create a low temperature plasma, which is blown up in a tube by an air compressor. Partway up the tube, the plasma is hit with a powerful microwave, which shakes the ions in the plasma about violently crashing them against other non-ionized atoms and vastly increasing the temperature and pressure of the plasma. The temperature and pressure generate significant thrust of the tube. Part of the secret sauce here is the flattened waveguide through which the microwaves are fired. Caused by a 1 kilowatt, 2.45 gigahertz magnetron, the microwaves are sent down a waveguide that squeezes down to half its height, 
as it approaches the plasma tube. This is done to boost its electric field strength and impart as much heat and pressure to the plasma as is possible. The researchers noticed that keeping the airflow from the compressor steady, the flame jet in the tube appeared to lengthen when the microwave power was increased. They set about trying to measure how much thrust was being produced, which proved difficult since the 1000 degree plasma jet would destroy a regular barometer. And even if it is as efficient or more efficient than a regular old Airbus engine, aviation fuel still carries much more energy for a given weight than batteries, meaning improvements in motor efficiency offer barely a drop in the ocean. Still, this is an exciting and novel plasma thruster design, and we're interested to see where things go from here. If it does prove scalable and efficient up to aircraft-friendly levels, it could make a genuine contribution to the emerging field of zero local emissions electric aviation. So, could they one day completely replace jet engines? Sure, a new plasma thruster could scale up to compete with traditional jet engines. And in the future, perhaps plasma could power cars too. There are something like a billion cars on the world's roads today, and almost all of them are powered by internal combustion. In fact, the 150-year-old technology is at the heart of most forms of transportation, whether it's a plane, train, or boat. The engine's importance to, well, everything, means that generations of brilliant people have dedicated their lives and untold billions of dollars to make it better. But no matter how close it comes to perfection, the internal combustion engine will always have one major flaw. It's killing our planet. Most combustion engines burn fossil fuels, and in the process, create greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and nitrogen oxide. In the US, transportation accounts for nearly a third of greenhouse gas emissions, despite several policies designed to limit its environmental impact. The internal combustion engine is a fundamentally dirty technology, but there are plenty of ways to make it cleaner, and they start with a spark, or more accurately, a spark plug. David Howell is the director of the Department of Energy's Vehicle Technology Office, and he spends a lot of time thinking about how to build better engines. This year, around $70 million, nearly a quarter of his office's annual budget, will be spent on combustion and fuel R&D. He said, quote, we see a lot of inroads being made by battery electric vehicles, but internal combustion engines are going to be around in some form for a long time. And there's still a long way we can go to increase efficiencies and reduce emissions. While plasma jet engines definitely look promising, we still have a long way to go. What do you think a future with plasma cars and jets will look like? Tell us your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give us a like and check out more on the Tech Monster channel. Thanks for watching.